and we are holy in the sense of being saved by Jesus Christ, but in the context here, he's obviously referring to those holy people with a holy city. The Jews and Jerusalem. Now here's the sixfold purpose of the 70 weeks. One is to finish the transgression. Two, and to make an end of sins. Three, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Four, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. And five, to seal up the vision and prophecy. And six, to anoint the most holy. And that anoint is referring to his coronation as king. Now, verse 25. This is where the 70 weeks prophecy is detailed. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to carefully read this, restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Remember that. The reason people have got the wrong edict is because they're not careful to make sure that they start from the edict not to just build the temple and not to just elaborate on the building of the temple, but to actually rebuild the city and to build Jerusalem, not just the temple. And that's how you know you got the right edict. Continues in verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, which is added to the seven, so it's a total of 69 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. So he's telling us that from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem, 69 weeks of years afterward, the Messiah, that's 483 years later, the Messiah would appear and be cut off. He continues, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come, that's a different prince. This is the Antichrist. The people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And finally, then it says, after the Messiah is cut off, that's the end of the 69th week, we now see the mark of the beginning of the 70th and last week. Verse 27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the 70th week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that's the consummation of the kingdom. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So there is the text of the uh, 70 weeks prophecy. Now, we know from reading that, that from the date of the command to rebuild the walls and gates of Jerusalem, 69 weeks of years should produce Messiah the Prince, who will then be immediately cut off. First of all, you have to establish what a biblical month and year is. And um, in the first and last books of the Bible, we have that established. In Genesis chapter 7, 11, uh, chapter 7, verse 11, and in Genesis 8, 4, the total time that um, Noah is in the ark was five months of 30 days. Do the math and you see that a month is 30 days exactly. And we know that from the historical records as well. Then you go to Revelation chapter 12 and you read there that uh, 1,260 days is three and a half years. So divide 1,260 by 3.5 and you come to 360 days in a year. And so that's how we know that. So the Bible establishes how we count um, this prophecy off. Now there were 69 weeks of 7 years for a total of 483. You can take 483 years and multiply it by the 360 days and you come to a total of 173,880 days which means that you can find the day that Artaxerxes commanded to rebuild Jerusalem and count 173,880 days from that day and you, should, you will know the day that Jesus, or at that time just referred to as Messiah the Prince, would present himself as Messiah. So if we were with Daniel, 
If we were in the room with Daniel, we could lay out this blueprint right here. We could see that you start counting the day of the command, and you count 483 years from that day, and you should see the time of the Messiah. And again, you're witnessing something you don't find in any other book, any other religion. Just keep that in mind. Now, you have four edicts in history, and people have been wrong and come up with all kinds of crazy notions because they started with the um, edict that Cyrus gave in Ezra chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 and you would start counting from 538 BC and if you do that you land in no man's land <laughs> 62 BC when nothing's happening so that's strike one Darius in Ezra 6 1 through 12 also gave a decree we don't I didn't find exact numbers on the years and everything so but that obviously happened before this one, and so it can't be the right one. And Artaxerxes gave two different decrees. One was in Ezra 7, 11 through 26, again, just sending more supplies to, re to embellish the temple. That happened in 458 B.C., and if you count up that, you come to 19 A.D., when Jesus would have been not even 21 years old, I don't think, at that point, even if the calendar is off by a couple of years. So the only edict that could be correct is the one Artaxerxes gave in Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. If you think Nehemiah is a boring book, that's because you've not taken in consideration that right there. Now the command to rebuild Jerusalem, as I said, is in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. And let's just review it real quick. We can see why it is the correct edict. Number one, it begins by saying, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. So if you look at that, it's the month of Nisan, the 20th year of Artaxerxes. And I won't get into the whole discussion. I know some of you would be bored with that anyway. But there is very clear reason why we believe that was in 445 B.C. So this is Nisan, 445 B.C. Nehemiah is the cupbearer of the king. And he's sad. And uh, the king is asking, why? And in verse 5, uh, Nehemiah reports, And I said unto the king, If it pleased the king, and if thy servant had found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. Now notice, it's the city. And that's why we know this is the right edict. That matches what we read in Daniel 9. Nehemiah 2 6 then says, And the king said unto me, The queen also sitting by him, by the way, they, a lot of people believe that's Esther, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Now, look at this. It says in verse 7, Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. These aren't just little letters like you would say, Dear Mike, how you doing? Good to see you. Take care. Bye. These are, these are like executive orders from the president and actually carried more weight than those. And so in verse 8, Nehemiah 2.8, it says, And a letter unto Asaph the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for, what? The gates of the palace. That's a political establishment. When you establish the gates in a city, you're establishing it as a sovereign city. Again, for the first time since it was destroyed. And for the wall of the city, again, establishing it as a sovereign city. And for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Now look at this, verse 9. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me, so he has an escort, armed military escort to get this done. So you have 69 weeks of years, 483 biblical years from Nisan 445 B.C. You date it from the Edict of Artaxerxes in 445 B.C. and the Messiah should show up the month of Nisan 30 A.D. And He did. So now the Bible tells us, it said, what should we look for? We recognize the Messiah by looking at the prophecies of uh, Jacob and... Uh, Zechariah. Now, one that people seem to miss is in Genesis 49.11. 
In Genesis 49, Jacob is prophesying over his sons. And he, when he gets to Judah, he prophesies of the Messiah. And he says, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now, that is a description of what happened when he came in on a foal of an ass and he was crucified. We also have the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Read that with me. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, who did that? Only one man. And we see those two prophecies fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ in Luke 19, 35-36. And all of this is a fulfillment of Daniel 9. On the very time, I'll say, that it says it would happen. Nisan, which is our March-April of A.D. 30. So let's read uh, Luke 19, 35 and 36. Read that with me. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Now, they were saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest, fulfilling the Psalms, which said that's what they would say when the Messiah comes. So Jesus, on Nis in Nisan uh, 30 A.D., the very same day He would rebuke the Jews for their ignorance of Daniel's prophecy. That's the very same day. He presented Himself as Messiah the Prince in fulfillment of that prophecy. And that brings us to this chart, which lays out exactly what happened. That... If we were alive before Jesus came and someone look, comes up to you and says, that book right there tells exactly the day the Messiah is going to show up. Oh, no seriously. Daniel 9, let's look at it. And then you could see it play out. Artaxerxes' command to rebuild the city in Nisan 445. And then 483 years later, Nisan 30 AD. It's exactly what he does. Just happened to be born at the perfect time to be an adult and to fulfill the prophecy. Now you see where we are in the mystery called the church. It's a parenthesis. The rapture could happen any moment. Sometime after it does, the Antichrist will come and sign that covenant we read about. In the midst of the covenant, just like it said in Daniel, Jesus said it will happen, Paul said it will happen, he will set himself up as God in the temple, put a stop to the sacrifice, and that will then crack open the last three and a half years of what's called the Great Tribulation period. At the end of the 70th week, with the return of Jesus Christ. But that represents something that you can't get anywhere else any other religion, any other so-called holy book, any other God, none of them give you that right there. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of mp3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.